Assassin's Creed Unity is the latest installment of the Assassin's Creed franchise that I personally played. This review is made almost two years after its release. Syndicate is already here, but I just had the chance to play Unity on the PS4. I know that it's considered as one of the worst in the saga. Is it really the case? <laughs> Unity takes place in Paris during the French Revolution. You incarnate Anno Victor Dorian, who seeks revenge for the mysterious murders of both his father and his adoptive father. The story is kind of similar to Fetzios in IC2, except that it's not as cool. Frankly, I didn't care of his motivation that much. Maybe because Arno is a little boring, I don't know. The main protagonist for me is the late 18th century Paris. Its representation is astonishing. I have rarely seen a city with so many details. It's beautiful, even in the poorest, dirtiest neighborhoods. Rien de tel qu'un lever de soleil sur Paris. On top of that, it's blessed with a unique lighting effect that constantly changes from bright sunny to cloudy to rainy, and it gives Paris an overall gorgeous looking. Unfortunately, the developers have completely removed the dynamic day and night cycle that has been established since AAC2. Why? I have no idea. Sure, you can choose manually a different daytime from the menu, but the long loading time will quickly discourage you to do that so often. Seriously, loading times in this game are the longest that I have ever experienced in this console generation. The character modelization is very good too, and pretty realistic, at least for the main characters, because the rest of the NPCs has a dull, generic look. What is not realistic, however, is having French people speaking with a British accent. That's why I switched the language to French. It just makes more sense and helps getting in the mood of the game. <laughs> Another thing that helps the ambience is the crowds of angry people you encounter everywhere in Paris. It's the revolution after all, and people are protesting, screaming, yelling all the time, and there are a lot of them. Maybe too much, to the point that it becomes difficult to just run through the streets without them getting in your way. But who cares, as long as you can use the favorite transport means for the assassins, rooftops. As the core mechanic of the franchise, parkour has been upgraded in Unity with a sweet little mechanic. By pressing R2 plus X buttons, Arno will escalate buildings, while R2 plus circle buttons will make him descend. Add to that a smoother animation that makes the experience enjoyable. It's not perfect though. Unfortunately, parkour problems in the old installments are still here, meaning a lot of jumping in the wrong directions escalating when you don't want to, hanging on the edge of a wall when you just want to run straight forward, it will happen, a lot. Combat is less frustrating in Unity. It still plays pretty much the same, except that now counters need to be executed in a specific time. Enemies will no longer wait politely for their turn to be killed, and won't hesitate to attack you while you're finishing their friend. It's still not as good and smooth as the Batman Arkham series, for example, but it's definitely a step up. Sadly, Unity has inherited the desynchronization problem between the animation and the sound effects during the finish moves, present in the previous installments. <laughs> Speaking of sound problems, I don't know if I'm the only one that can't stop the voice of that merchant. <laughs> While it's not a major problem by any means, his theatrical tone and his presence everywhere in Paris make it quite annoying and hard for me to just ignore. 
Just shut up already. Now, let's speak about the new features in Unity. If you find combat too difficult, you can avoid it and trigger the stealth mode by pressing the L2 button. Very similar to the Batman Arkham games and less effective, but we'll get into that in a moment. Unlock crouches and hides behind walls or tables if necessary, making him hard to be seen by enemies. He also has a number of tools that can be very helpful. His angle vision, for example, is crucial during these sequences and allows him to see enemies behind walls and a lot of other stuff. Smoke bombs make a return from previous episodes and can be life-saving tools during both tilt and combat. A new tool that Arno has is the Phantom Blades and it's perfect for distance silent kills. Actually, it's not that new. It acts exactly like a crossbow with an infuriating low range. Sadly, all these add-ons fail to make the stealth enjoyable, and there are reasons for that. The stiff animation of Arno makes it needlessly challenging to just move around without getting stuck in a door or a table. And he can't aim with his phantom blade while he's hiding. Our assassin has always to get out from his head out, completely exposed to the enemy eyes, almost shouting hello, I'm here. The camera doesn't make things easier either, especially in doors. Another reason is the enemy AI, and by AI I mean artificial idiocy. Every enemy suffers from amnesia. You can kill a guard friend just in front of his eyes. Go hide somewhere for a little, he will search for you for like 5 seconds before going back to his position as if nothing happened. The Hawkeye snipers don't make things any better. On the contrary, they are the ones that I hate the most. You will often get spotted by one of them, and if you want to eliminate him first, you have to be very close to him, because no weapon in your position has enough range to take him down from a safe distance. And the time you do that, there are great chances to be spotted by another sniper that you didn't see. And unlike you, the range of their weapons is excellent and they won't miss you. To compensate for their stupidity, Ubisoft had the brilliant idea to always put a small army of guards anywhere you need to infiltrate to make things, you know, more challenging. Except it only succeeds to make it painfully frustrating. Bottom line, the stick in this game sucks and being made by the same company that gave us Splinter Cell and Ghost Recon is unacceptable. You will quickly ask yourself this question, why even bother to be stealthy while a combination of smoke grenades and a sword will get things done? <laughs> A new feature that has been added is the character customization. While it's true that you can customize the assassin's gear and weapons since AC2, only this time the mechanics is much deeper. The armor sets affect different stats and attributes, from adding more resistance and augmenting your life bar to allowing you to carry more tools. Overall, I like the level of depth that has been given to the customization. My personal problem with it though is that some items are way too expensive. And while we are in the menu, I'd like to give a special mention to the map. Being made fully in 3D, it gives accurate information about the verticality of the different buildings, and it looks nice too. You can also buy new skins using the synchronization points that you gain by finishing the story missions. Speaking of missions, it's nice to know that they are far less linear than they used to be. Unity gives the choice to approach your target during assassination mission the way you like. Just like the previous episodes, there are a lot of side missions to do and stuff to collect, and it sure will keep you busy for a very long time. Unfortunately, the rewards for these missions are disappointing and won't motivate you to finish them all. Last but not least, Unity introduces the co-op. Now you can play some specific missions with friends or alone if you are like me and don't have friends. 
Seriously, I know that co-op is one of the biggest new features in Assassin's Creed Unity, but it's not really what I'm looking for in Assassin's Creed game, and I didn't give it a try to be honest, so I can't say much about it, but it's definitely there if you are interested. Now, what can we say about Assassin's Creed Unity? Is it really that bad? Well, I think one of the major reasons why a lot of people hated it at its release is the glitches. I personally didn't find that many in the game, Ubisoft has already took care of them with patches. Some glitches are still present of course, but none of them is game breaking. I have to admit, I did enjoy the game, it has a lot of fun moments, but on the other hand, it also has its share of frustrating ones, especially the almost broken stealth mechanics and the enemy AI. The setting is gorgeous, but the story is dull. The main quest is interesting, but the side stories are repetitive and boring. The game has tons of items to collect and features to unlock, but none of them is worth your time really. What Assassin's Creed Unity needed is not a French revolution, but a gameplay revolution. 